this is my bow. I also have my gun. This one's for shooting, and my other one is for fun. The pig is 10 yards. The bear is 20. The elk is 30. The coyote is 40. Turkey, 25 yards. Try not to step in it. Don't shoot it. Just try to avoid it. The elk is 40, and the target pattern is 70 yards. Let's try that. Oh, I'll take that. On the table. That was 40. That's a nice shot. Let's try the 70. Crap. Let's try that again. Crap some more. I've got a strong wind coming up right behind me, and it's hard for me to gauge this this far, so I'm going to try again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot one more arrow into this. <sighs> well, I'll tell you, I've done better. It's just a tough day. And I wouldn't make this shot unless I was, uh, I was really desperate. Or I was drinking a lot. I'll have to wait. Uh, have to wait for another day to show off. I guess not gonna let me. I got this wind. Had a good gusty breeze, and uh, that throws that arrow around quite a bit when you're shooting from that far. But that's good. That's that's why you get so good at uh, judging distances and windage with a bow. Bear in the bush. Where do you get that bear in the bush? I'd say that's about uh, 40 yards. It looks like I got a, a nice buck here. 20. Let's hit that. 
I'd hit that. Yeah, I can hit that. Ooh, hopefully that's going to be for real in just two or three weeks. Sometimes you got to stick those bear twice. 40 yards. It's my favorite shot. I could stick arrows and ass hats, asses all day long at 40 yards. So I got my bow set up with a ripcord sight, a bone collector apex, um, fiber optic sight with battery power for low light. I got a Matthews uh, weight on the front. And the Matthews adrenaline, considered by many, okay, you know how opinions are, but uh, this is considered by many to be the best bow that Matthews ever made. And I, I feel that way as well. Uh, it's a great bow, super smooth and super quiet. That's what I really like about it. These are really well-made bows. I love the detail in it. It's really light, solid. Matthews makes a, a great bow. I'm not going to say the best, I think so, but uh, everybody's uh, got their favorites. Definitely, arguably, the best bow out there. <clears throat> and I'll tell you what, Mom and Dads, if you want to bring your son or daughter up to be a shooter, uh, the best way to start them is on a bow uh, because it's so much more difficult to make your shots. You really gotta you really gotta concentrate on control, um, breathing. The bow is just so much more difficult uh, in the aim. So if you bring them up on this, uh, that's going to lend to them being great rifle shooters. Um, it's just a it's the best way to introduce them into shot control and group, concentration, patience. You really can't, you know, fake uh, being an archer. You can buy a gun and uh, you can go shoot holes in paper at uh, 25 yards and, you know, call yourself a tactical ninja, but it's very difficult uh, to fake the bow. That's what I like about it as well. It kind of uh, sets you apart, and uh, it definitely is not a, uh, it's an athletic sport, put it that way. You have to be in shape. You're going to do a lot of walking, and uh, upper body strength is important as well. I would recommend, uh, I'd recommend the bow at any age, but especially uh, introdu introducing it to uh, your children as early as you can. I want to give a couple other tips to you guys today if you uh, care to take them and that would be a couple shout outs one would be to my uh, my YouTube buddy Brooklyn Prepper he started a uh, new channel it's called The Brooklyn Prepper The Brooklyn Prepper there's a lot of confusion out there that he switched to a channel called The Brooklyn Prepper but it's not The Brooklyn Prepper it's The Brooklyn Prepper and uh, he's switching over to that channel and switching his um, his videos over to that one. And I really recommend, if you haven't done so already, to uh, sub to the guy. He's a great guy. And uh, he survives and lives and grew up in one of the harshest environments on Earth. And that would be New York City. New York City is, uh, you know, you can't be dumb to survive there. It uh, takes a lot of effort and not only does the Brooklyn Prepper survive in New York City, he thrives there. So he can teach you a lot about life in general, and uh, he's just an all-around good guy. And I really recommend that you uh, sub to his channel if you haven't al already. Again, his new channel is The Brooklyn Prepper. Not The Brooklyn Prepper, 
the Brooklyn Prepper. Now I want to leave another shout out for a channel that I've added to my best of the best channels that I sub to. These are the channels that I have on the front of my page. Uh, that, and I haven't added anybody to this list in a long time, but this guy is definitely worth a look. I suggest you sub to his channel for sure. Uh, his name is Babblefish5. Babblefish5. I will leave a link to Babblefish5 in my info box below. Uh, I've watched this guy for a while, and uh, he's made me look really good in camp. He's made me a hero with my kids. Uh, he's just got a ton of information on dehydrated foods. Some of you were asking what the uh, chicken stew that I made with my, uh, my little girl when we went to test that uh, Swiss volcano stove. That came from his channel. And this guy's just got a gold mine of dehydrated uh, recipes. I mean, it's unbelievable. He's got a website too. Uh, they're just fantastic. I haven't found anything yet that I don't like. And I've tried almost all of his stuff. Uh, I, I still make a lot of his stuff. I've almost entirely uh, stopped buying dehydrated food. I exclusively use Babel Fish uh, Five's recipes and I just keep them in uh, a backpack in my freezer. And uh, sometimes we even have them for dinner if we're in a hurry. But I use them all the time on the trail when we're camping. But I really think this feeds into the whole uh, prepper theme because this guy, uh, instead of freezing or pressure canning, uh, you could use these dehydrated uh, recipes. They are extremely healthy. And the best part about it how, it, how it really matches up with the whole prepper attitude, is it's very cost effective. So you're getting just a better product for a lesser price. I mean, that is, that's prepping in a nutshell to me. Um, and this guy's got it all. I mean, he is a gold mine. He is an undiscovered, underutilized channel on YouTube. And uh, I really recommend that you go see Babblefish 5's channel and check out his recipes and apply them, you know, whether you're camping or if you just want to put a few things away uh, in backpacks that are dehydrated. He'll really get you into some great recipes for dehydrated food. And I also want to say, if, if he's listening to this, uh, this shout out, you know, I, man, I really owe you. I mean, I, you know, I, I thumbs up. I always thumbs up. I never thumbs down videos. If I watch a video I don't like, I just don't come back. But I've thumbed up a, a lot of your vids. And uh, I've, no, you know, I've, I've just never, I'm not really a commenter usually. But I've used a lot of your recipes, man, and they are great. You're doing a great job. But, uh, it's awesome to have you here as a resource. Another head that I really recommend is the small game head. Uh, they run in, I think, 100 grain and 125 grain. This is 100 grain. And you can use this devastatingly so on a uh, small game. It'll take them right down and uh, tear them up. It's really nice to have just an even, you know, your emergency pack or your carry pack uh, in case you're out somewhere hunting and a storm comes up and you can't make it back and you didn't plan on, uh, you know, food for that night. Uh, this can come in real handy.